Hi guys, John here again. And Jack. Welcome back to another sensational day out here at the island. Noise. So what are we doing today? Uh, let's see, lights on. Woo. Good morning. Well today we're gonna have a bit of a talk through um, what we chose as an electric motor and why. And then we're gonna go on to uh, through the things which made us choose the motor and things like KV, um, revs per minute, all this kind of stuff and the correlation between all those things to make our final choice. But also delve a little bit into the ESC and what's behind our choice of ESC and how some of the things in there are uh, very important to what we needed to do. Yeah, uh, and also we will be covering the other electronics as well, but they will come in a later video because otherwise this video would have been like 30 minutes long. That's right. And I can't be bothered ed editing that. So um, without further ado, Without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> cool. <laughs> okay, so what we are gonna start with is actually the body, bottom unit that you've got, and we're gonna work all the way backwards um, through the motor, through the ESC, and back to the batteries. Now, this thing, you're not gonna be able to change because you got it from your neighbor just like we did. Which brings us to the motor. So when you go to choose a motor, um, there's a few different things you'll notice on the net. Uh, when you're reading about them, there's going to be like all these ratings for them. You've got your current, uh, maximum current, your continuous current draw, the voltage range, um, even things like revs per minute and that, which will be sort of uh, depending on how physically large the motor could be or what the manufacturer sort of puts in for ball bearings and that kind of things. Have a look through those specifications um, because you're going to need to sort of have them in the back of your head when you go through this process of theoretically planning out where you're gonna be with the whole thing. So initially you also knew um, how many horsepower your motor was. So if you look at like a 10 horsepower motor, you're still also gonna be looking at an electric motor, which is gonna be around 10 house horsepower. And you just basically have to um, pop that into the conversion tables on the net and it'll tell you how many kilowatts your motor will need to be. 10 horsepower is around about seven, seven and a half kilowatts. Um, this motor here is rated for about 12 kilowatts continuous or 25 kilowatts um, peak, very short periods of time. The 12 kilowatts is actually achievable and this thing actually does it really well. But it doesn't really stop there either because the next issue is you need it to turn at around about 5,000 revs a minute. For the bottom unit, which what was, which was what we just explained, and what you're going to look for, how do you know this thing actually does 5,000 revs? Well, it's got to do with the windings, uh, so something which is referred to as KV, and you can tell the people when you order a motor who make these things, the manufacturers, you can tell them how many KV you want out of it. So we're not talking KW, which is kilowatts. We're talking KV. K is the torque constant and V is the voltage of your battery pack. Those two things together, so the KV times the torque, is going to give you pretty close to the revs per minute that you've got. Let's say that your battery pack is, you've decided on a, maybe as we have, 86 volt pack. Yeah. And you have a, let's say, 100 KV motor. That means that that motor will theoretically, theoretically do about 8,600 revs per minute. Yeah. With a little bit of load on your motor, you're not gonna really get to the 8,600. No. So remember, you might only get to 7,500 uh, revs per minute with a bit of a load on it. Yeah. Now the next bit I want to cover was actually the um, things that actually have to do with um, the ratings of the motor when you go to buy it. Uh, you're looking at 
continuous current draw or maximum current draw and the voltage ranges and that kind of thing. When you have your KV uh, and you know your battery pack voltage that you're going to use, some things are gonna to start to dawn on you and that is the fact that when this thing works at um, say a continuous amp draw, so it's doing and delivering the 12,000 watts, so the 12 kilowatts, is that you're gonna discover there is one hell of a lot of heat which is generated in these things. They get super hot. Now, this motor can work quite okay up to about 130 degrees. So we're talking about this 130 degrees centigrade. It is stinking hot. Uh, we use a water-cooled motor to assist with cooling. And we've also left a fair few holes around there so that air can pass through and cool it down. Yeah. One of the um, problems with the heat though is that you don't want to run it that hot. Uh, for certain reasons, that's really maxing it out and you never want to run anything that hard. It's gonna um, you know, shorten the lifespan of things. Um, but secondly as well, you do get a lot of inefficiencies in motors, batteries, and the ESC as soon as you get heat involved. So you want to keep your heat down. So that's also the important thing when you start to look initially uh, on paper uh, what motor am I going to buy? Get something which is a tad bigger than what you're really gonna need because then it will run um, more efficiently. It won't get as hot. It's not gonna work as hard to achieve what you need. So now when you've figured out how many revs you need, how much power you need, and you've yep. settled on a motor, you need something to power that motor, which is the ESC. That's right, yeah. Um, the ESC is can be a pretty interesting story because there's just so many out there. You're gonna sort of get in, delve into this world of um, electronics that if you didn't know much about it previously is a pretty steep learning curve. And there's some things that are straight off the shelf which say that they work straight out of the box. And then there's gonna be a whole range of different ESCs um, which are programmable, but also bring with themselves a lot of new questions. Yeah, now uh, we recommend that you go with a programmable ESC. Yeah. Um, it's just more versatile, um, and it also means that if you read up a bit, you can set parameters, which means that you don't burn it. <laughs> That's right, even with the ones like straight off the shelf, there are some of these like flyer um, ESCs and things like that. And they do work straight out of the box, and they work really good. Uh, we've actually tested a few of them, which are about the 350 amp uh, models, and they do a really good job. But what you will find is that you will be continuously using the throttle uh, with a thought in the back of your head where you're not going to go flat out because something is going to get too hot. When you then start looking at the programmable um, ESCs, it just opens up this massive world um, and a whole lot of possibilities and a lot of new questions. And a good place to start is actually by grabbing the motor that you think about choosing and looking at the specs of it. Now, off the top of my head, this has the following. It has a 180 amp continuous current it draw. It has a peak current draw of 300 amps. 12,000 watts continuous or 25,000 watts peak. Now, to achieve those out of an ESC, you're actually um, getting up into some pretty decent ESCs. And what you wanna do is get an ESC which will pretty much do your continuous current draw in a nice manner. The ESCs that are out there, all I can say is get something with a bunch of headroom because the people making the ESCs are giving you specs which uh, will work and they'll do a good job, but they generate a lot of heat. Again, heat is a problem, and within the ESC, you have to be able to dissipate the heat, get rid of the heat. The bigger the ESC, um, the better it works, the quicker it gets rid of the heat, and you're gonna have a better efficiency and a lot more um, ease of use when it comes to your programming and using it out on the lake. Yeah. Uh, we're actually gonna have a look at the ESC that we are using at the moment because as a um, uh, something to demonstrate, you can see with our build here that the ESC is the APD um, 28S, uh, UHV 28S. And we'll pop a link to it in the description below so you can all have a look at it as well. Yeah. It's tiny, it's this little block here, the little black one. At the back here we've got an aluminium cooling block 
and we've got a fan attached to the front. Yeah. And these hoses that run out of the aluminium block uh, actually go straight to the impeller. So we've had to water cool this as well. Yep. Now, as a bit of a demonstration to get um, before we actually go into the specs of the ESC, with our water cooling, um, it's pretty much as ancient and as you'd think. The impeller in here uh, generally pushes the water up to your um, motor, block. Motor, motor block and cools it. And all we did is we got the pipe there. You can check it on one of our other videos. And we just routed it by a couple of plastic tubes, by one plastic tube, and it goes as such, goes around the ESC, and then it heads back out, the little spill pipe at the end, and that's just over the edge of the boat. Does an absolutely fantastic job, and it keeps this thing cool. So what we're gonna do now is just have a quick look in the actual APD configurator, um, because as a choice of what you need for your ESC uh, to work well with your motor, is you're gonna need things like um, your um, auto timing adjust, you want the motor start power, um, if there's soft start, look for things like ramp up and ramp down response of the throttle, uh, it makes a big difference to the actual usability of it. Other things like um, your bus current limit and your phase current limit, that is the, the amount of amperage coming from the battery pack or the amount of amperage going from the ESC into the motor. Uh, those kinds of limits, you definitely want the temperature limit, as you can see here, we've got it at 100. And then you've got other things like over voltage response, which is probably more for if you're using it on bicycles or cars or those kinds of things. And over temperature response, it tells you limit the power to 50%. You also have the logging um, capabilities. We used to have the logging capabilities. Oh, that's... that's right. We were a bit unfortunate there with um, an APD have really tried to help us. So. I think it's just a, a slightly disappointing outcome for both them and us. It, it, there's no logging there, but... Um, yeah, some, something happened with the ESC. It, we tried getting the logs for it, couldn't, sent it off to APD. They said, yeah, we fixed it, we got it back. It still wasn't fixed. Yeah. yeah. Other things to look out for are th like turning on and off motor beep turn, um, tones. Um, when you start the motor, it'll beep. And if you're using a controller like we are, a remote controller, so your end points, um, then there's always going to be firmware updates and diagnostics in all of the ESCs. So all in all, when you're out there and you're going to start doing this system, uh, you're always going to work backwards pretty much from your motor uh, because you've got the size of the, the lower unit. And once you've got your motor, head off to looking for the ESC and get the bits and pieces for the ESC as such uh, with the, the bus and phase limits, the temperature limits, and those kinds of programmable things. You don't have to get the really ultra programmable things. There's a lot of uh, VESC ESCs out there, which are absolutely fantastic, but might be a little bit too far to go for a lot of people. To sum it all up, yeah. um, number one, always work backwards. Yeah. Number two, leave heaps of headroom, always. Yes. Number three, uh, ask yourself what trade-offs you want to make. Do you want, you know, a motor that's really torquey or has many revs for top speed? Do you want an um, EC that's really programmable but that you have to spend more time with? Or, or do you just you... want something which is relatively simple? Yeah, that just, you know, just plug and to play. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think these are questions that you should ask yourself uh, when designing a system like this. Yeah. Uh, but there's obviously a lot more questions surrounding batteries, BMSs, and charges and all of that right. will be coming in the next, next video. video okay guys so we hope that's helped you with uh choosing what you need to choose uh any questions or comments or let us know what you want us to do and uh, pop them down below and we'll see you guys next time thanks for sticking around like and subscribe like and subscribe <laughs>